The Nigerian Bar Association came into being in 1933 with the goal of promoting the rule of law and its adherence in the society. However, Nigeria that exists today is very different from the one that was in existence when it was formed. The Nigerian Bar has been faced with difficult situations and has been accused of being a puppet to those in power. So we ask today, what is the purpose of the Nigerian Bar in today's Nigeria, especially with our new reality, that's the COVID-19? Joining us to discuss this is a senior advocate of Nigeria, Dele Adishina. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. How are you? I am all right, thank you. Um, we, we have to start from so many issues, but, but let's start from, I mean, the very basic. What is the role of the bar in shaping a, a people-centered politics that translates to good governance? Thank you very much. I must start my answer to your question by a gentle protest. Protest in the sense of the language <laughs> that you used for the Nigerian Bar Association. <laughs> well, yeah. But, but you did agree there are so many issues. Uh, we'll start with the, I mean, the, the, the very the, small the, the, the Nigerian Bar Association can never ever be a puppet. So oh, okay. please take my protest and uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. All I'm right, Sarah, noted. Let me, let, me, let me say, seriously speaking, that the Nigerian Bar Association, the duties and responsibilities of Nigerian Bar Association are very clear. And the atmosphere under which the Nigerian Bar Association operates also must be very, very clear and known to everybody. We have two major responsibilities. When I say we, I mean the association. The first one is our responsibility towards our members. Don't forget, it is a membership-driven association. Once you are a lawyer, you are enrolled at the Supreme Court of Nigeria, you are automatically a member of the Nigerian Bar Association. So the first responsibility of the association is to those members. Their security, their protection, their welfare. These points are very key. Number two, the responsibility of the association to the society. Lawyers are nation builders, and they must cooperate and collaborate with the institutions of the state to advance the society. In this area, you talk about the rule of law, the protection of the rule of law, the promotion of the rule of law, the defense of the fundamental human rights of individuals, the protection of the independence of the judiciary, and then the general enforcement of law and order in the society. Uh -huh. These are the societal, these are the corporate responsibilities of, Niger of uh, Nigerian Bar Association. All right. Um, now, let's, there, there, there is, I, I, we get an idea now because of the time uh, frame. We need to squeeze in yeah. as much um, uh, questions to get your thoughts as much as possible. Now, there is the issue of conflicting court orders, especially when it comes to uh, political matters. What possible remedies would you put forward to help address this situation, to bring some level of sanity to such matters? Again, let me thank you. That's a very, very quality question. Everybody must play a role here. The first role, I will throw it back at you as a journalist. And I will charge you that you educate the members of the public. That when two people are fighting, I use that word fighting loosely. Let me use the language. When two people are disputing over an issue, and this issue is submitted to court for adjudication, only one side will win, and the other side must of necessarily lose. The side that loses the matter must be ready and willing to accept that decision of the court. 
So one of the greatest problems I've identified in Nigeria is that people want to win. The two of them are up against each other, advancing different oppositional points of view. But what about the what, what about the lawyers? Well, what about the I'm lawyers? I'm coming there. I am coming there. I am coming there. The point I'm emphasizing here is we need education. We need enlightenment to our people. And you will do well by helping us to undertake that. For the lawyers, the lawyers are trained to advance the interests of their clients. They are supposed to argue the case of their clients to the best of their ability. If you hire me to argue a case, and the person sitting next to you there hires another lawyer, both of us must argue the cases of the client to the best of our ability. But what, what about the responsibility to encourage, when you see, uh, look at the situation, and maybe from your enlightened position, uh, there isn't really uh, much to be achieved from litigation. Isn't that a responsibility um, of the, uh, the lawyer to advise his client otherwise because some people say lawyers encourage their clients to go to court uh, because they they seem to want um, uh, more money uh, for billing hours not 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 really responsible lawyers will not do that professional lawyers will not do that a case has been brought to my chambers in this place somebody wanted me to handle a matter for him at the supreme court it took me a hell of time almost a week, because the client has done his own whole work, he believes they had a good case. And I told him, I said, you have a good case, but the time to ventilate that case in court had expired. You have a course of action that cannot be sat upon by the court anymore. You have wasted, wasted, you have waited for too long. The law allows only 60 days. This is over three, four, five, six months. You are coming here. So there are professionals that will do the right thing. And I believe most of us are in this category. That is not to say that there may not be a few of us that will say, go to court. Maybe they are thinking will be, it is better for you to go to court than to result into arms, sticks, and guns. Which uh, may so result into yeah, anarchy. Uh, I, that I'm will be the reason. However, 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 please, just one second. However, the preponderance majority of us do the needful by advising clients. There are cases when the client will insist that you must go to court. Okay. There are cases when they will insist that I want this, if I'm wrong, let the court pronounce it. You are not the one that will tell me, Mr. Lawyer, I have come to hire your services. Okay, I, I, I will leave that In that, that situation, you can't blame the lawyer. I will leave that line of thought for a second and um, just for now, maybe when I see you and when I'll ask the other part. But for now, uh, let's look quickly at the recent judgment of the Supreme Court dismissing the entire case against uh, Audrey Zocalo and co on a technicality. Uh, there was a lot of upheaval uh, with that one. What are the lessons from that situation that you um, perceive the judiciary uh, would have learned? Well, that judgment, with very profound respect, I do not agree with the reasonings of the Supreme Court. And I say that with all respect. Once a court of law has handed down a decision, a judgment, it is open for constructive criticism. It is open for analysis. It is open for discussions. These are done in order to guide and formulate, you know, a position for similar situations in future. The Supreme Court has power to overrule itself. And the Supreme Court has also laid it down over and over again that technical justice is no justice. Well, do you ever we think have it, already do, do translated you? into we have already translated into the realm of substantial justice. That is where we are today. Uh, do you ever um, that say that scenario? I, said I do not agree with you. Uh, uh, sorry Pardon? to interrupt, but I need to get this out. Do you ever as envisage a scenario where the Supreme Court will uh, go back on a judgment and correct itself in this country? Do you envisage that? And if another case comes to the Supreme Court with the same set of facts, 
and circumstances and the law, once they are convinced, once they are persuaded that their earlier judgment was given by in Korea, they will change it. They have the power to reverse themselves. They have that power. All right. At the moment, there is a situation in Ondo State between the governor and his deputy, even though that point seems mute now because the um, governor has come out to say he's now well from uh, COVID-19. But um, while the situation lasted, is there a part um, of the law that addresses this? If not, should we have it so we don't have such a situation where um, a deputy leaves the party for which he ascended um, a position and then still wants to retain that uh, power. He said the law is fluid here. The law is fluid here. First, it is difficult to apply law to hypothetical situations. Lawyers don't do that. A real situation has not arisen in Ondo State. The governor is back on seat. At least we all see that, and we have that on the news. To that extent, the issue of transfer of power from the governor to the deputy is a moot point. Having said that, you also talked about a situation where the governor joins another party. Uh, you will have to pardon my limitation here. What I'm conversant with, with regards to the provisions of the law, is where you are elected as a member of the National Assembly or State Houses of Assembly, on the platform of say party A, and during the pendency of your stay in the house, you change your party from party A to party Z. The law says you must vacate that position. You know, okay. I'm not, I haven't seen a similar provision for the governor. The, I mean for the deputy governor. deputy governor. The deputy governor did not stand an election in his capacity as an individual. It is a joint ticket between him and the governor. In fact, it is the governor that nominated him as a running mate before he became a, a deputy okay. governor. For the sake of so, time, yes. Let, let's, yes. Let's take a look at the uh, skepticism about the uh, courts going virtual. Uh, there were initial skepticism, uh, so to speak, challenges. Um, I had some lawyers here who talked about uh, some lawyers who are not tech uh, savvy and as well as judges. Uh, since then, since March to now, how impressed are you with the evolution in that regard, occasioned by COVID-19, of virtual courts in Nigeria? I, I, an individual, I am very impressed that we have taken off somehow, somewhere. And I've said it over and over again, that as bad as this coronavirus pandemic is, there are some opportunities we have gotten from there. And one of such opportunities is this digital court proceedings by virtual, through Zoom, Skype, and what have you. It has been happening in some other nations of the world. And if we are expecting that we will get there in 50 years' time, here we are live, face to face. But I must also hasten to say, as I have said in some other uh, platforms, that this is not a fire brigade issue. It is an issue that will require also careful planning, including adequate funding of the judiciary. Equipment must be acquired. Power must be supplied to the court. Trainings must also be given to both the judges and the lawyers must train themselves. But I think it will be faster for the lawyers to get themselves acquitted to the process, you know. But authorities must fund and fund and fund the judiciary. One of the reasons why I made me to up, you know, to, 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 to embrace this straight away is that I see it as a veritable instrument to address the perennial issue of delay and congestion in our courts. All right. So it's the thing that must be encouraged by the legal practitioners, by the judicial officers, and more importantly, by the government whose duty it is to fund 
this judiciary. All right. I, I was going to ask you um, to talk to us a bit more um, on the Nigerian Bar Association. But for want of time, I would rather talk about um, the public knowledge that you intend to run uh, for the office of the president of the NBA. What do you intend to do differently and how? Thank you very much. I am going to do a lot of things differently. I am going to emphasize on the responsibilities of the association in these two departments that I've mentioned earlier. First, I am going to pay concentrated attention on the welfare of the members of the association, particularly the young lawyers. I will also not neglect the senior lawyers. A good number of the senior lawyers mean welfare. Welfare means how well you are faring. And there's a lot for the association to do. I'm happy that at present there is a standing committee under a former senior advocate of Nigeria, Dr. Wali Babalaki, that is, you know, that is superintending the Nigerian Bar Association Welfare Committee, set up by uh, the president, Mr. Paul Usoro, senior advocate of Nigeria. I'm also going to focus um, with very proactive and pragmatic, you know, uh, approach. We're going to focus on the rule of law. Rule of law, rule of law, rule of law in all the dimensions that I've itemized earlier. Right. There is no democracy without rule of law and due process. That is the oil that, you know, greases the wheel of democracy. And you will agree with me that democracy has become an issue of life and death in, 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 in the world. So, rule of law must be given a priority attention. The NBA must come out fully and defend it. The judiciary must also be ready and willing to insist on their independence while the lawyers must resist any encroachment. All right. Um, thank you very much uh, for uh, some of the insights you provided on the you know, the role of the bar in Nigeria's development. And, of course, we wish you the very best with um, your role, should you become successful. Um, I can assure you that by the grace of God, if we become successful and be the leaders of the opposition, the activities of the opposition will convince the Nigerian people that the Nigerian bar opposition is not a puppet. Thank you very much, and God bless you, Rico. Thank you, and God bless you, too. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, I will give my take. Do you stay with us? The governor of Kano State, Abdullah Ganduji, has accused the People's Democratic Party of trying to loot the treasury of Edo State. Governor Ganduji, while speaking to newsmen at the All Progressives Congress National Secretariat in Abuja, said the PDP's romance with the Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki, will not yield any positive result. He said the union lacked any ideological following and that the APC will stop any attempt by the PDP to rig the upcoming polls. You know that APC is ready for this election. You know that APC will make everything possible to make to win this very important election. The PDP decided to accommodate our former governor in Edo State not because they have anything common, not because they share some ideological feelings, but simply because he is managing the treasury of Edo State and they want him to use that treasury in order to win the election. We know PDP made Wike their chairman. I assure you, we isolate Wike in an isolation center. Yes. And before he recovers, the election is over. Yes. We assure you, we shall create an enabling environment for a peaceful election. We know the opposition is planning to rig the election. But we assure you, we know their tactics. We know their methodologies, and we shall dismantle all their tactics to ensure that we win this election. The people of Edo State will not accept this treachery. The people of Edo State on the 19th September will come out in mercy and vote APC 100%, I assure you.
Our legal and political systems are intertwined. They both have an end goal, a very noble one, if I may say so. The promotion of the objectives and directive principles of state policies and protection of human rights. One of the fundamental ways to achieve in this is equitable access to justice for all. But in our society, such access is mitigated somehow by such frivolous issues as undue delay in the administration of justice, the reliance on technicalities to defeat the end of justice, which the Supreme Court had previously frowned at but has now endorsed with its recent ruling in the case of the former Abia State Governor, Oji Uzokalu. There is, of course, the high cost of litigation among other sundry issues. Now, the Nigerian Bar Association has been around for a while and lays claim to championing an improvement in access to justice in Nigeria. How have they fared in recent times? Not very well, in my opinion. Gone are the days of the vibrant NBA, headed by Chief Alao Aka Basharu. Our lawyers these days have, in my thinking, created more of a mess than provide clarity when it comes to the often touches journey to acquiring justice or simply created a blur of what justice should be. Still, my take tonight is not a bashing. I do truly believe that there is so much more lawyers and the umbrella of the MBA can do to re-engineer the narrative for the practice of law in Nigeria. For me, it starts with a recognition of the enormousness of the role they play in nation building. They should use their understanding of the law and be for real the much needed watchdogs in the decision making process of the political class. If you are a legal mind watching, I know you get my drift. At least, I hope you do. As always, thank you for your time and your attention while the program lasted. It is warmly appreciated. I will see you again soon enough. Until then, be well, stay safe.